Okay, we're back and we're really live this time. <laughs> this is Think Tech Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel. And we have a, a company that has been through various, you know, periods in its history, um, but which is now under a parent called DataNet Systems, Inc. And the CEO, or Computant, and the CEO is Francis Tulu. He's to my extreme left. And Michael Chan, and he's a business development manager. He's to my immediate left. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Okay, great. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to a really exciting show here. Okay, first, Computon. Local company, huh? Yes, sir. And it, it was founded in 1986, before I was born. And it has done <laughs> remarkable things, serving the community here and other communities elsewhere. So, you were there, Francis. Let's talk about why you founded this company, what it was like, and bring it forward till today. Okay. So, all my life, throughout my life, I do like solving problems. So, uh, after I graduated from Hawaii Pacific University, I have had several jobs. And in my jobs, it was always, we have, you know, this process, this procedure, and I want you to find better ways. So, it was my way of finding software solutions and implement it for businesses. And I've done that for real estate companies, for uh, local appliance companies and distribution businesses. So at some point after several years of work, I decided I would like to get into a business myself and see how I can make a difference, how I can go to businesses and solve problem. This is how uh, Computon was born, mm -hmm. and and the 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 first solution that that I have gone out and implemented it was membership management for clubs. Once I have done several of the clubs in 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 Honolulu, Hawaii, then I went after implementing accounting systems for mid-sized businesses throughout the throughout the island. And after four or five six years, of course. We had to find new market, and that was the birth of point of sale systems for Computon. I really appreciate this because I think you know where you're living is in database systems, and database systems can be so powerful. Uh, people don't realize how important they are and, and how sophisticated they are, and how they can solve any problem really, any business problem um, with a with a database system. So I, I really appreciate it. We have a database system here, so. We, we come at that, you know, come at the issue from our own experience. Okay, so you started in what, retail? We started with accounting software for wholesale distribution hotel, businesses. Hotel distribution. No, wholesale. Import, wholesale, export. wholesale. Yes, sir. Okay, that was easy, yes. relatively speaking. Okay, and, and, then, and then you got into membership clubs, was it? Membership club management software. That's pure database, isn't it? You it know, is. With lots of names and all this and finding people and all that. Um, okay, and then you got into even more sophisticated things with general accounting packages? General accounting packages for inventory management, wholesale distribution solutions. You were coding business. your own self at that time? Uh, a little bit of both. We, we became partnered with Computer Associates and Sage Software. And well, that was a big company. Those back are big when. companies. They're still around? Then. They're still around. Okay, okay. Yes. I remember that huge company, uh, yeah. national, international company. Yes. Okay, and, and uh, your office was on Richard Street, you told me, back when? For a very, very long time, we are there. Yeah. Until five, six years ago, we moved to Waimano Street. How were you funded? Uh, friends and credit cards? Uh, definitely. That's, <laughs> that's the only way, right? <laughs> well, I started the business from home, home yeah. office. Yeah. And then uh, when it was time to find an office, of course, uh, I had a shared office uh, uh, on... Um, uh, near Honolulu Advertiser Building. Mm -hmm. We were there for a couple of years, and then we outgrew, and, and then we took an office, and they continue to expand from there. You know, a lot of companies in Hawaii resist local mm, computer integrators and programmers. They say, oh, no, we got to go to the mainland. we got to talk to bigger companies. We can't, we can't talk to local companies. Did you find resistance in that regard? Funny. Funny you mentioned that. Uh, it was a challenge. It was a challenge, um, I would say, uh, 25, 30 years ago, uh, when we are a small company. Uh, we are unknown. Uh, but over time, uh, we 
been around, our name is around. We have done implementations for a lot of, uh, I would say, big local companies. As an example, if you look at Fisher Hawaii, the largest office supply and furniture company in the state of Hawaii. With a million zillion little things. Little thing. Database heaven. <laughs> they used to have 130,000 products. Okay. <laughs> so, Fisher Hawaii, we're thankful to them. They have given us the opportunity to work with a Hawaii-based little, small little company. And for them, we have implemented point of sale system, inventory management, purchasing, accounting integration. They have three locations with over 100 users. So we implemented their servers, their networks, all into a wide area network solutions. So company like Fisher, uh, when they implemented the system in 2010, uh, in the past, they would be looking elsewhere. But we were able to do a job, and a pretty good job, at a fraction of the cost. And tailored to their operations. And tailored to their and operations. Exactly tailored to what they needed and wanted, yeah. Exactly. Uh, another example would be uh, Polynesian Cultural Center. 50, over 50,000, uh, it's a huge, huge property with lots of retail stores, lots of restaurants all over the facility. And lots with, of visitors and reservations and all that exactly. process, yeah. So we are thankful to them. They have given us the opportunity about five, six years ago. Look at Shirokia, the Shirokia Japan Village. They have 72 terminal, right? So, so over time, Are we are sitting here with me. Absolutely. Thank you for my coming joy. down, Francis. My <laughs> joy, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, yeah, the beginning, I think we had to prove ourselves that we are worth earning their business. There were some challenges where, you know, we are too small for some of the local businesses and they went elsewhere. But over time, we overcame that challenge. You know, <clears throat> you're thanking them, and I suppose that's appropriate, but they should be thanking you also. Because all the businesses you've named, if they didn't have a good system, it would, it would be terrible for them, especially in the run-up, you know, in, in, the, in the time between, say, 1986 and now, where things have expanded in so many ways. If they didn't have a system that would track on that expansion, deal with all the issues, and have, have a database they could rely on, they wouldn't be where they are. You've made it possible for them to, to uh, you know, change with the times, to handle their business challenges. Um, and, and furthermore, I would say that if you didn't do that, if you gave them a system was, was not quite right, the disaster would follow, you know? <laughs> so, so they should be thanking you, yeah? I think we gave them the tools, and then they used the tool yeah. to basically run their business efficiently. Yeah. And manage their it's resources. It's very important. You're their most important partner, I would say. I know how that works. You know, you can be efficient or you can be behind the curve and never catch up. And, and a database system for a business is so critical, especially a retail business or the kind of business you describe. Yeah. yeah. Thank so you. <clears throat> now well, let's go through this chart. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk about this chart. <coughs> the chart of your expansion, if you will. DataNet Systems, Inc. All right. And you have what? One, two, three, four, five icons on the chart. Can you describe that? Sure. So DataNet Pacific, we started that as a managed IT services company. And uh, we provide, uh, we implement network systems for medium sized small to medium sized businesses, somewhere between 10 to 100 uh, computers. Uh, and we manage their solutions. If, if they're they don't have IT staff or they have IT but not enough manpower or technical power, they come to us. So we, we, we provide uh, disaster recovery solutions, we provide backup uh, if they need uh, you know, system updates, right, monitoring. These are the services we provide. In the recent years, I would say about three years ago, we also expanded into uh, cloud hosting. Many, many businesses, for instance, uh, uh, real estate companies, uh, you have engineering firms, uh, you have doctor's offices, they have offices, not, they have more than one offices. And so how do you link them together? The old way used to be you buy servers 
for this location, servers for that location, and you have some workers work from home, some could be working from a remote office, a engineering firm could be having a trailer someplace where the construction project is going on. So we brought in the cloud hosting solution for businesses where their software application, their email, their database resides on our cloud data center. And then they all connect to it remotely. Benefit is everybody's connected to the same system, right? And second benefit is, is that you can do that at a fraction of a cost because the infrastructure is already in place that they don't need to invest in. We made that investment for them. What's the connectivity? I mean, are you connecting through uh, wireless or um, ethernet? Um, are you connecting um, um, in a way so that I can get it on any device, anywhere? Beautiful question. You can use any device. You can use PCs, you can use Mac, you can use iPad. Uh, doesn't matter what device you are using. Because the data is in our data center, right? And our, our uh, data center is in the Washington state area because we have a lot of customers in the mainland, right? So it made sense for us to have a data center in the mainland. Uh, but we also have many customers here in Hawaii connected to that data center. So as long as you have you know, good internet service and you don't need to invest in any special internet service to connect to that, right? So, so as long as our client has internet service, whether it is wired or wireless, doesn't matter. You could be in a coffee shop. You could be in Las Vegas having you know, whiskey. As long as you have internet service to connect your laptop or your iPad, or, and you, you have total access to, to your application. You know, one of the problems data. that I've noticed, uh, we use Apple FileMaker here. I know it's, a, it's way less sophisticated than what you do, but. Uh, one of the problems I've noticed is that if you're on a wireless connection and then you lose the wireless connection and you're in the middle of a transaction, you've got to have robust software um, to remember where you were and to resume the conversation yeah. when you get back on the wireless. I, I assume you did that a long time ago. It, it is part of the uh, data center design. So when you are, let's say, you are writing a letter or an email or writing a document or you are doing billings as an example. So all you are doing is, is from your laptop, you are using internet to connect to the cloud desktop. So the desktop is doing all the work. If you lose the connection, wherever you left off on your email or billing, right, it's still, it's running on the cloud desktop, so you don't lose anything. Automatically resumes. Automatically and, resumes. And seamless, you don't even know what happened. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, have we finished the chart? I want to be sure we've gone to the last step of it. Okay. So we talked about Computant. DataNet Pacific. DataNet Pacific, uh, the POS Highway. So POS Highway, very, very uh, interesting. Uh, concept one day came to my mind. We all remember recession. Recession hit, our sales went down by 40%. And, and we did what we could to stay in business. So uh, we, all of this stuff, we all sat down and talked. How do we get out of that? So, okay, let's, how can we cut costs? That was the first measure, right? But you only can cut costs so far, right? Then that's not enough anymore. And since we are a small company, back then even now. How we, small is now? Uh, now we have 25 okay. staff. Right. Uh, back then was probably 14. Okay. But we're like a family. So I can say that I can pay you uh, therefore, I have to let you go. That's not an option because you know the children, the wife, and the husband, right? So when cost cutting is no longer an option, I said, okay, we sold our point of sale system to small, medium, and big retailers statewide. Where do we go from here? 
The only answer is we have to go across the water. We have to go to the mainland. Then the question is, how would you do that? Where is your financial resources and manpower? Right? Okay. Uh, sometimes I think being, being ignorant is, is probably a good option. Because if we can dream about it, how we can not open an office there yet because we don't have the financial means. And we don't want to ruin computant reputation uh, because locally we are known as computant and, and we have a good reputation. What, what would be the next logical thing? How can we expand in the mainland, right? This is okay. Why don't we come up with a different website? Since we are doing point of sale, so POS should be part of the name, and we are in the information business. You remember information highway? Everybody used that information highway. So the idea is let's combine POS and information highway. POS highway was born. And to our surprise, within three, four months, we got our first client. And you'll be surprised to know who the first client was. Central Park in New York. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> right? And we're surprised. Good for them. <laughs> right? So they, they hired us. They have five different gift shops inside Central Park. So they hired us. And I only had at that time one sales rep working out of his Virginia home office. He drove there, met with them, closed the deal, and I sent a couple of people to do the system. That's how U.S. Highway was born. So now we fast forward. Last year, we, uh, we have been selling retail point of sale system only all over the country. Uh, for instance, in San Francisco, Sutter Healthcare System, their hospital, huge hospital chain. So they are gift shop, newborn connection, they bought system from us. There's wineries in New York, bought system from us. So there are companies that we consider big in Hawaii. We have a client called Dance Fan City. They manufacture fan in China. And then they sell through Office Depot and Lowe's and, and all of the national you know, chain. Uh, two and a half, three years ago, they came to us and said, we got 39 stores and we have um, another uh, 12 uh, uh, franchises, we want to talk to you. So, funny, I got the call, uh, my, my mainland sales rep transferred the call to my cell phone when I am getting ready to go to my office. It was quarter to seven. I'm in my underwear. <laughs> I took the call and I'm talking to the IT person of that company, 12.30, I'm still, in my bedroom, pacing around and talking to him. Year and a half later, they bought the system from us. So, POS Highway, in a way, allowed us to not only survive through the recession and then grow. Last year, uh, we purchased uh, another retail point of sale company out of Indiana called Midwest POS. They do tremendous business with the hospitality side of it. They wanted to, to sell their retail operations, retail business. I met the owners uh, in Atlanta several times. We became good friends and they called me and they, are you interested in, in buying Midwest POS retail uh, side of the business? We bought them. And then, of course, we had to add more technical people and salespeople in order to support them. Uh, they had about 150, 60 accounts, customers, but some of the customers may have 10, 20, 30 stores. So these also, this acquisition also allowed us to go to the next step, grow the business to the next level. Mm. So we're going to have to go to the next level and go to Michael now. Sure. All right. Michael's expertise. Michael, you've been around. You've seen at least some of this. Yes, yeah, You've yeah. You've been developing businesses, uh, a clientele, yeah. Right. Compared to a lot of the people at the office right now, I am fairly new. <laughs> so, but then I was, um, 
I was assigned to kind of headstrong the ITAP POS project that uh -huh. we were doing. That's, this, uh, that's that piece of the chart is yours, eh? right? Right. All right. Yeah, that's that's what I've been working on. That's my baby. <laughs> okay. But um, what is it? It's a POS system uh, directed towards restaurant, and um, now we're getting into more retail. But mainly, it started out as a solution for restaurant, and now um, we already had a restaurant solution, but um. We, we realized that times are changing and the demographic of business owners and the mindset of business owners have been changing. And you know, Hawaii, we have a lot of ambitious young people wanting to start up restaurants. Not including you, I think. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, and food. I'm right, I'm right. I know yeah, I'm right. absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and restaurants especially because food is really important in yeah, Hawaii, right? Is, like yeah. as soon as the new restaurants yeah. open, like I head right, over right, there right, right away right. to try it out. And um, so, a lot of these um, very young, ambitious, or they don't even have to be young, you know, ambitious people that start a restaurant, they don't necessarily want, have the money to spend a big upfront cost for, you know, like the, like the traditional kind of POS system. It's a risky business. It is, it is. And so what we try to do is, without sacrificing features, and, but we wanted to help kind of smaller business owners get into that market, uh, you know, with food business, with like a lower cost point, and just kind of... Um, more of like a SaaS model where they pay like month to month on the subscription. So it is a very, very robust system. Oh, so what Francis was talking about, we sell a big system, it's cash up front, and then you maintain it going, in, you know, it's a monthly or whatever. You're mm -hmm. talking about maybe not so much up front. Right. Yeah. And it's a monthly subscription. That way you have a small business mm -hmm. keep going without a big capital investment at the exactly, outset. Exactly, you know? exactly. And, um, yeah, but at the same time, we didn't want it to look like a small system where, you know, it's lacking in features or, you know, cutting corners or anything like that. In fact, um, this system was created where it allows smaller business owners, like you mentioned, to compete against um, the, big, the big guys, right? Yeah. But at the same time, give the big guys also a chance to save, save some money and moving forward in their operations. As well, well. I, I submit to you that a restaurant <laughs> these days can really use high tech. Mm -hmm. And a lot of restaurants are, may I say, behind the curve on that. They're, mm -hmm. they're using 17th century <laughs> systems <laughs> in terms of uh, their food inventory, in terms of their uh, customer uh, menu selections, in terms of their communications with the kitchen, in terms of the payment of the bill. In fact, you go to Europe, for example, in Europe, right. they come out to your table with a little you know, widget about that big, uh -huh. and that you order that way, you pay that way. Uh, you don't have to surrender your credit card for any right. moment in time. It's really important. Um, and so I think that's what you're talking yes. about. Yes, Europe it's a is really ripe market. Yeah, you are correct. Yeah, Europe is a little bit more ahead of us in that <laughs> sort of um, industry. And um, it should. What this is has is we actually have a paper with all the features. So this is a restaurant POS. It can do anything. You can do like you mentioned, order at the table side. So you know customers don't leave their credit card with the server, right? And it also has um, many additional features that can go into it, like um, online ordering, you know. Um, oh, outside the restaurant. Outside the restaurant, right. And more and more popular now. Yeah. yeah, especially Hawaii is getting crowded. You know, sometimes you have to wait long lines outside restaurants. You want to just kind of sit back at home on your computer Absolutely, or your phone. Sure. Just kind of order food, pick it up, right? And you're enabling that. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so I can get on your program at home. Mm -hmm. I can look at the menu for my favorite restaurant or right. a series of restaurants, right, right. Right. and I can go order things that I like, mm -hmm. um, and that that will that will that will result in somebody delivering it to me or picking up or uh, both. Both. So both. Uh -huh. so you can you can go there and pick it up. And now, what's becoming more and more popular is um, third party delivery services like Uber Eats, yeah, Grubhub, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Postmates, yeah. and um, how those technology works is when a restaurant signs up with them, they. Um, those companies give them a tablet and when an order comes in it alerts you that an order came in and they have to walk over and manually punch in the order on their machine but what we can do is integrate with that so it automatically just puts it into your system without you having to be there prints a ticket in the kitchen and you know it's more seamless less work for and your, faster and faster a lot faster because uh, yeah. it's yeah. really important that you not wait two hours for your food of course yeah, no one <laughs> wants to do that right? nobody's gonna do that <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. You want to show us some of you? You have some uh, some slack. screenshots. Let's sure. take a look. Yeah, we can go this over the, those. This really is quick. the one we're talking about. Is ITAB ITAB POS? Yeah. 
<clears throat> this is the, um, is that the one? Oh yeah, so okay. this is kind of like the basic um, front screen with any servers. Which, as you can see here, when an order comes in, you can um, decide, hey, is it going to be for here? Is it takeout? You want to deliver it? Is it a phone order? You know, and the menu and the screen that you see here is very customizable. You can change it to however it fits your establishment. And yeah, just you can do it however you want it. So you, you can set it up with the menu for that particular restaurant. Right. And you can, I, I just know from what you've said so far, is that you can tailor this any way the restaurant wants and make the restaurant unique in exactly. some way. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just the color scheme, it's the whole system mm -hmm. operation. Yes. Yeah, right. It, and if you can go back to the slide, it, it actually has a, a picture. So the next one. And that's, that's like a general report page. And the next picture. That's, that's for the owner of the restaurant. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't get that at home. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an um, example of what uh, the back office looks like. So the way back office works for iTab is that if you have a computer, whether it is a Mac or a Windows computer at home, at the office, wherever, as, um, you have a portal that you can log on to your website's back office like that and control everything. You can customize your menu. You can see how much sales you're making oh, that so day. so I don't have to call you to change anything. Mm -hmm. no. I can change it myself. Yeah, everything is And I can order them. food. It's going to tell me how much I have to order in order to stay current in my food, so inventory. My food inventory. Yes, you know, it does inventory as well. Yeah, you can manage a, all of a, that. A, a boon to restaurants, <laughs> for sure. Because restaurants, you know, they staff is expensive, and sometimes... Uh, you know, you, you want to do it with your existing staff instead of hiring new staff. Mm -hmm. And um, gee whiz, to have it all available right there this way, the owner can, um, can really mm, be efficient and make more money or mm -hmm. at least lose less money. <laughs> yeah, that's case important. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to tackle the negatives first yeah, yeah, before yeah, you yeah. look at the positive. So um, this, is, this is a finished product. This is available yes, right now. it is. It if is I open available. the restaurant tomorrow, I could call you up and you can yeah. set me up. Yeah, yeah is that a and plan? And then I can tailor it myself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, this is very good. Right. So <clears throat> is this available not only in Hawaii, but also in the mainland? This is well? everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's multi-currency, multi-language. If a Japanese... Oh, multi-language? Yes. Oh. If a Japanese restaurant came to Hawaii and say, I want to buy your POS and I want this to be in English because, you know, my employees are, you know, English speaking local people. But in Japan, I want the same POS in Japanese. Here I get paid, you know, in, in dollars. In Japan, I want to get paid in, in maybe uh, in yen. And want to open up an, uh, uh, a restaurant maybe in Dubai and I want to collect in their currency. So you can localize the POS in their local currency, in their local language, but they still all talk together to the central database in the cloud so that you have a total picture of how your entire enterprise is doing. So what about training the individuals who are running the restaurant, the waiters, the, the owner, yeah. the cook, whatever, who is? Um, is, it, is the training available? I mean, you have videos that will right. train them. And do you, are you able to get on the system remotely with so many mm -hmm. companies too and show them, you know, this is what you have to mm -hmm. do to make it work and mm -hmm. all that? Yeah. 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 So it's we, a full tilt boogie here. Right. So our <laughs> main focus um, is, you know, helping the industry in Hawaii. Right? We want to help the local businesses first. And for them, we, we need do, more restaurants. This will exactly. help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we want to be able to, uh, we, we do provide both. We can do, we can train them in person. And there's online um, additional training videos that um, they can use without having to rely on us. It's up to their choice. But one of the biggest takeaway from that is that since we are a local company, we are available to them. And um, there are... You mean they can call you on the phone? Right. They can call us on the Because a lot of companies, you call them on the phone, lots of luck. Exactly. And there's other iPad kind of POS systems out there. And not to say they're not good POSs, but their, their main focus is um, they were created by credit card processing companies. So their main business is credit card processing, not necessarily the POS side, yes. right? So this is where we're kind of different from them in a sense that we come at it from a foundation as a POS company and we're local. And we get many calls from restaurants that are already existing saying that they're not satisfied with their system, not necessarily because of features, but because they're saying, we cannot get support. So you're a business development manager, and I, you're developing with me for sure. <laughs> but are, are you also coding? Are you also a designer? Ah, I'm not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's not smart enough. He's not a programmer. But 
is very bright and very sharp when it comes to what feature and function is needed yeah. to be more sure. efficient, right? Well, where can we cut one step? Well, you've got to be responsive to the customer. Exactly. And, and, you, and if you can do that, then you're going to you know, build a customer for life. So this is the flagship right now. Is this the most promising thing in your array of uh, software right now, the ITAB POS? It is a great product uh, with solutions that can address every aspect of a restaurant business. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is going to help us, our business, to grow. Uh, as, as I've done that with Computon, with the retail software, started locally here, went to national. With ITAB, we started in Hawaii last year with ITAB. We have lots of customer here. So it's May been successful. It has been so far very successful. So, you know, you have various kinds of software with various kinds of markets. And my, my last question, we don't have any more time. We're <laughs> out of time here. Um, my last question is, uh, where, what's the future for Computant or DataNate system, DataNate systems, whatever? <laughs> Um, are you, are you going to keep all these different uh, functionalities under the same roof and the same, you know, uh, holding company? Uh, or is, is it almost time for you to start spinning some of these things off or, or going public? So my question to you, Francis, my closing question is, what's the future and when is the IPO? I like to be my own boss. Um, I, I, do, I don't think I'll do very well if I have to take orders or somebody tells me you can't do that, <laughs> right? When you borrow money, you have to pay it back. Therefore, you have to be very careful when you make decisions. I have done, ran the business for 30 plus years without borrowing a penny. I like to keep it that way. You know, I knew that. Intuitively, I knew that. <laughs> you, managed to, you managed to leverage everything out of operating, operating income, yeah, that's terrific. Right, right. My, my parents taught me one thing. You don't go buy anything unless you have the money. <laughs> and I, I live by that. That's very good, so, very good advice. <laughs> <laughs> so the money we made through the business, of course you have to take care of our families, meaning mine and my, my, my partners and staff, right? And then anything residual, we invest it back. That's how we've done it. Now, you're going to continue to do that? I will continue to do that as long as, you know, I have the energy to work and, and, and run the business. I'm passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about uh, going out and, and helping my customer. And, and I'll give you an example. But you I'll, have to develop a succession plan. You know that. I have started that. I, I, he, he may be sitting here at this table. That succession plan. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We got it. We got it. We got to close. We're out of time. I, we appreciate uh, Francis, your time. Michael, and thank you so great much. talking to you. You are a, a picture of energy and <laughs> enthusiasm and innovation and creativity. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for, for having, having us. us. Francis, yeah. Michael, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs>